What is going on, everybody? It is February 28th, the final day of February. Right? Yeah, it's not a, not a leap year. Yeah, final day of February. Uh, nine games late tonight. It's kind of interesting. Um, you know, some of the games are just uh, utter trash. Like, the Raptors are going to smack the magic. Um, that Memphis Grizzlies Phoenix Suns game is, oh boy. That'll be fun. Uh, but Spurs, Pelicans, Clippers, Rockets. Um, Rockets heading to uh, L.A., sneaking through tunnels and shit. Um, Wizards, Warriors would, should be good. So, you know, I'll take it. I can't complain too much. Um, I can't complain about last night. Uh, didn't do very well at all. Um, my best lineup is here on the left. Um, yeah, I think I'm getting off the, the Larry Markin and train officially, um, till his salary drops to like 5,000 and I fire him up again, but I just can't buy a bucket right now. One for four for three just, just doesn't have it. So, you know, I rode it as long as I could. Um, really needed to have LeBron and Giannis to, to push your way towards the top. Um, I had a bunch of both of them, you know, comparable ownership, so just didn't overlap them as much as I should have. Uh, Wade was one of the key tenants. He shows up in um, most of the top 100 actual lineups, but uh, George Hill was the biggie. Uh, 45 fantasy points, 4,600 in salary. Um, it was uh, one of the better plays of the night. Um, this was the guy that finished in first. Nailed the, the Mason Plumlee play and the Taya Dosage play, which, you know, the, I like the Taya one, that Mason Plumlee one, knowing that Millsap was back. Whew, or, at least, you know, assuming Millsap was back. But even if he wasn't, I mean, that one's, that's a good one to hit. Although, I assume, you know, judging by being in first and third, he probably didn't have too much exposure to Mason Plumlee. Just happened to be that those two that he had were uh, top shelf shit. So, kudos to MJ Club. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So the first game up is uh, Pistons and Bucks. Pistons 105 implied total uh, is 13th. They have they are uh, two point favorites at home against the Bucks. Uh, Bucks on the back to back. Don't really like either side of this. Um, it's just kind of a neutral game. So we'll see what comes up. Drummond 10-3, uh, 9600 on DK. Detroit. So you're looking 50. I, man, I feel like uh, I feel like this is a good spot for Drummond. You know, got into hit the 60 mark his last time out. Uh, he's been playing a little bit better. If I'm Drummond, I'm not super worried about the big rotation for the Bucks. I'd be cool with Drummond. It's a three. Uh, Blake, he just has not been good. Ah, man. He just keeps popping, but oh, he's still already up from the last time I looked at it and didn't like it. Lovely. Yeah, just he has been so bad in his last five games. It's hard to want to just clobber him here. Oh, there we go. 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. I just, it's going to be hard to trust him right now. There's another guy that I've been just, I've been waiting to, to break out, and he's not doing it. He's doing the opposite. He's, if I needed him to break out, he's breaking in. I think the Pistons have lost like seven of eight or something. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of seven. So, Blake's price all the way down to 7,600. It was 9,200 on my birthday. 14 days ago. 16 days ago. Hmm. 
I'm gonna say that he's a four. I, I can't do it right now. It's a great price. Um, you know, I think he makes for an interesting GPP play. But right now, you just can't trust him. Uh, Reggie Bullock, 4,500 on both sites. It's just a four. Ish Smith, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. That's not all that bad, especially on DK. Well, not especially, but just in general. Uh, still just a four, though. Stanley Johnson, 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Yeah, it's just a four as well. I think the only thing that I would want to have any real part of here would be Drummond. Uh, until you can trust Blake again, I'm, I think he's a you know, GPP guy strictly. He's just, he's not doing anything. One rebound in 32 minutes, four rebounds, four rebounds. Like, that's just, it's, that's brutal. He's got to do something else on the floor. Check out the Bucks now. Bucks 103 implied total is 16th, so pretty low. Uh, coming off the back-to-back, -back, Giannis with a big game last night, 73. Um, and you would think he's in a pretty good spot here. Uh, I like the shooters from Milwaukee a little bit more. Uh, Giannis is at 11,000, 10-5 on DK. Um, I don't really see any reason to be worried about uh, the... Well, you know, the back-to-back -back is always a little concerning, especially on the road. Uh, but it's not as if the Pistons are anything to be worried about. They've been playing really poor defense as of late. Uh, I'm going to say that Giannis is a 3 uh, Chris Middleton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, it's a pretty good spot for him as a shooter. Um, Pistons do like to give up the threes. <sighs> but you need a big one out of Middleton, and uh, he hasn't popped off in a while. Best game in the last three-week stretch would be 43, and you're looking for like 38 just to hit 5x so you really need him to expand on that to go crazy uh, I like the matchup though um, it's just a three um, if, if I saw a little bit more upside in his number I would think about bumping him up because I just really like um, I really like his matchup tonight uh, Eric Bledsoe 7900 on FanDuel 7400 on DK Man, that's a big price for Bledsoe. Quiet night last night, and you need him to go, you know, north of 40 um, to start. Uh, biggest game he's had in this past stretch is uh, 47, which could be fine. Um, again, I like the idea of him, you know, shooting his way into a good game here. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a, apparently a tier 6, which I didn't know was a thing for me. Uh, but he's also a 3. John Henson, 5,900 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. That's a really nice price on DK. Uh, got 26 minutes last night, put up 19 fantasy points. Um, yeah, you would need God, 36 or higher, really, for him to go crazy on FanDuel, which I don't see. Um, I'm going to say that he's a 4 on FanDuel. And that price isn't bad on, on DK. That opens things up for you. You know, he's a little bit more valuable on uh, on FanDuel because of that extra point for blocks, but it's marginal. Um, no interest in Tony Snell. Now, right now I have Jabari Parker projected as in, but that's something we'd want to keep an eye on uh, with the back-to-back. -back. No guarantees that he's going to play tonight. Um, didn't play in the most recent back-to-back. -back prior to the break but I mean at some time at some point in time you think they would start stretching him out a little bit uh, got 27 minutes last night which is good didn't do anything too crazy um, so for right now I'm gonna project Jabari in at a, at a three level but it's uh, 
it's something we need to keep an eye on and we should know you know they probably won't have a shoot around um because of the back-to-back and travel but we should probably know pretty early whether or not he's playing i'm trying to be cognizant of uh of my drinking um somebody mentioned in the comments yesterday that you know they didn't like that they could hear me drinking and i can only imagine that sounds so awful so i'm trying to be smart about doing any like coffee slurping in the morning i tried to cool it down a little bit so i didn't have to uh you know be gentle with it but ultimately make more noise although really you guys are coming here and listening to this stupid noise come out of my mouth for an hour so can't be much worse than a coffee slurp but i hear you i don't i don't want that to sound ridiculous on here so i'm gonna i'm gonna temper that as much as i can uh magic hosting the raptors uh, magic with a 105 implied total which is 13th and they are nine and a half point underdogs at home um, this is a really bad spot i mean for any team really but the magic are dead last for me I don't expect a lot out of them. Uh, Toronto defensively, uh, really, really good. So they do. Uh, Toronto limits threes better than just about every team in the league. Uh, they are second, so you know the shooters are in a little bit of trouble here. But prices seem to look okay. So Evan Fournier, it's fifty-nine hundred on Fanduel, fifty-three hundred on DraftKings a really good price for him actually um he would need 30 uh his biggest game in this past three week stretch was 41 so that would be you know that would be good this 36 pointer would you know hit 6x uh so he can get there problem is this game really flies in the face of him um you would want like like it really doesn't match his skill set the way that you would want it to I want to know how much he shoots when Aaron Gordon is healthy. Let's say Aaron Gordon is on the floor. What does Fournier do? Okay, so he's fine. Nothing crazy. Good to know. Um, yeah, I can't... I really like Fournier's price, but between the matchup and just uh, the defensive... The way that they set up defensively, I don't think that that's a great spot for him. There's upside there, though. Uh, if he is the one that gets hot... I know that sounds stupid. Aaron Gordon, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Um, you know, three games back since the break, two above 40. Uh, that's actually not too bad. How much is his salary down? Yeah, so he came back at 8,500. They brought him down to 7,900. Oh, you know, also questionable, so keep that in mind. I didn't realize he took as many percent or many shots at, from three as he does. Uh, yeah, he's just got to be a four. Jonathan Simmons, uh, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Uh, this is the guy that lives in the mid-range a little bit more, not, not shooting as many threes. Um... He had uh, 40 in his most recent game. He had a 30-pointer um, on the 12th. He had a 48-pointer on the 6th. Now, granted, that they both happened with, um, or the last two happened without Gordon or Vooch, but at 5,100, um, I like that price, and there's, um, there's definitely sufficient upside in him. Um, you can't go too crazy again because of the, the matchup, but I'll say Jonathan Simmons is a three. Vooch, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. 
Um, I've got him in for 29 minutes, which could be a little low. Uh, you're looking for, you know, 40 plus. Um, he hasn't hit that at all in his three games back. I wouldn't expect him to go like super crazy here against the Raptors. So again, I can only go to a four. And he's a he's a tough add on DK. Uh, last guy I'd want to look at would be DJ Augustin, uh, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. He had 32 uh, his last time out, which would be functional, but I don't see a ton of uh, interest in him. Let's go to the Raptors. Uh, Raptors, 114.5 implied total is actually second, and I have them with the second best matchup uh, on the slate. Uh, Going to be a nice spot to target. I like that it's in Orlando. It makes the blowout just slightly less possible. So um, we can focus on someone like DeMar. Uh, DeMar is 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Um, biggest game in his last three weeks stretch, 49. So he has been relatively quiet. Um, he looks like a, a great cash play tonight. I'm not sure I like him as much in a GPP. Um, but <clears throat> I'm inclined to say that he's a three uh, just because of the matchup. I can't go too crazy because I think that he's a little overpriced. Uh, Kyle Lowry is 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, his biggest, you know, he had... Two back-to-back -back games right before the All-Star break, 43 and 46. He needs that just to hit value. Again, I think Lowry would... <clears throat> excuse me. Let me take a sip of this. I hope that was quiet enough. Um, I think he looks like a decent cash play, but at that price, it's, it's hard to extract a ton of value. You're looking for him to get up into the 50s and... Uh, that might be difficult in this in this game. Um, Magic, oddly enough, do limit threes, so that does affect Lowry a little bit more. Um, he's a three, uh, but I temper my expectations. Um, again, I, I don't mind him in cash at all. GPP is going to be a little tough. Serge Ibaka, all the way back up to 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Uh, biggest game recently, you know, he's, he's had mid-30s in his past three. All of those are going to be decent uh, cash values, but he hasn't just popped off. Um, Serge Ibaka revenge game for a half year in Orlando, maybe. Um, I think Serge is just a four. It's... It's a tough one there for me at 6,200. Um, but again, another another relatively safe cash play. Jesus. Uh, Jonas, though. 6,400 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, you know, his, his minutes have been yo-yoing. Sometimes he's seeing 30, sometimes low 20s. But... He's had a couple monster games right before the break. Back-to-back -back 40s. Even a 30 isn't, you know, awful in 23 minutes. Um, if you think that he can get any time, uh, there's there's definitely some upside in the number. But his minutes are just so weird and so hard to predict. Um, he's just he's GPP only, and I think that he's a 4. It's hard to go crazy here. Uh, Van Vliet, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Um, biggest game recently. He put up 31 right before the break. Um, if you think that this game gets out of hand, you know, you could see uh, you could see Van Vliet get a little bit of extra run late. But I wouldn't go any more than a 4.
and then um, I probably wouldn't look any further down. Although, again, if you think that uh, the Raptors are going to go crazy here, I think that Siakam and DeLon Wright could be uh, interesting guys as, like, GPP punt. Go to the Hawks, 103.75 implied total. It's 15th. Uh, they are four-and-a-half-point underdogs at home against the Pacers. Um not the best matchup for Atlanta. Uh, Pacers are going to be on the better side of this, so that will be a focus of mine. But let's take a look at Atlanta first. And first up, we get John Collins. Uh, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Um, he's been quiet lately. Uh, hasn't had any like really breakout games. Uh, biggest game in his last uh, three-week stretch is 31 which wouldn't even be value. It's kind of crazy. It's as if um, his his bigger role is somehow muting him um, from the efficiency that he had before. Um, yeah, I don't I don't love it. Um, I think that upside is relatively limited here. Now I'm gonna say that Collins is. You know, I'm, I'm probably being a little too aggressive if I say it's a four. Uh, I think it's a three just because I think that he's good and um, I think that his motor can get him there tonight. Uh, Schroeder, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. He's only played 27 minutes in his past two. Um, prior to the break, he had a 40-point game, which is really what you're looking for at this price point. Um, I'm going to say that Schroeder is just a four. I don't really love it here. Uh, Torian Prince, 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DraftKings. Uh, he had 40 his last time out. Um, that was by far his biggest game in his last three-week stretch. He only had you know, second biggest game was 28 uh, and that 28 would just barely be getting you to value I wouldn't expect another 40 point game and at uh, 5200 on FanDuel or 5700 especially on DK um, I can't imagine wanting him so he's a 4 on uh, he's a 4 on FanDuel and that's mostly because of the position I can't imagine touching him on DraftKings it's really bad Baysmore at 5,800, uh, 5,600 on DK. Biggest game is a 30, which is not very good. Um, just hasn't been as integrated lately as you would like, or, well, as they would like, I guess. Uh, again, he's just a 4. You would think more value would be popping out of the Hawks. You know, down Bellinelli, down Ersan Ilyasova, but no, nope, not at all. Uh, Dwayne Dedman at 5,500 is not something that I would entertain. Um, I think that he's getting less and less minutes now as the season goes on. I'm actually a little surprised that they didn't buy him out, but I know that he's got a, I think he has a player option, so. Maybe not too surprising. Um... So yeah, I wouldn't. I don't have much interest in Deadman, Mascala though. Four thousand on Fanduel, four thousand on DK. Uh, he's been getting more minutes. I've got him in for twenty four. Um, you know, twenty is his number. Hasn't really gone crazy. That's basically what he's hit. Uh, I think Mascala looks okay in cash, but he's still just a four. And uh, I don't think I would want to go to, like, Tyler Dorsey or Isaiah Taylor. So let's go to Indiana. This one I'm a little bit more interested in. Um, wait, what's Glenn Robinson's name on cleaning the glass? Glenn Robinson the third. Thank you. Help. There we go. Well, now why isn't he showing up?
Okay, there we go. So uh, Pacers, 108.25 implied total. You know, four and a half point favorites on the road. Uh, they have the seventh best implied total, and I think they are in the third best spot of all the teams. So let's focus here. Ola Depot, 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. And they have like really just not played in the past three weeks. Uh, Ola Depot had a 73 point game uh, before the break, had a 60 point game before the break. Um, I like Ola Depot a ton here tonight. Uh, you know, he's coming off a day's rest, only played 23 minutes. Anything weird happened there? Okay, so he just had 49 against them a couple nights ago. Only played 28 minutes in that game because of garbage time. Man, I like Oladipo here, especially because the game's in Atlanta. Um, hmm. I think for once I'm going to be focusing on Victor Oladipo. Uh, I think that he, for me, he's a two. Uh, just a combination of, you know, going up against the Hawks in Atlanta. You know, shooting guard, not really the strongest spot. I'd like to see where he ranks on Fantasy 5x5's best spots. Oh, one of his partners in crime is close. Okay, so Oladipo a little bit towards the bottom. They haven't given up any monster games. I just, I'm, I'm Team Oladipo tonight. Uh, Bojan, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um, he's been stuck in that mid-25s range, so, uh, you know, cash looks a little bit more realistic for him. Shoots 43% of his shots from three. It's not like the Hawks just give those up in their entire... I'm just going to say he's a three. Uh, the matchup is great. Um, you know, you hope for those shots to fall, but I can't go too crazy. Thad Young, 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um, you know, put up 41 right after the break. Had a 39-pointer right before the break. Both of which would be, you know, really solid performances. Uh, where does he land? 35th. Okay, still no monster games against the Hawks. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Thad's a three as well. I'm going to have a, a, a definite focus towards the Pacers. Corey Joseph, 5,100 and 5,200. Uh, went for 36 right after the break. Went for 42 right before the break. He's all over the place from a GPP perspective. From, you know, 10 points to 42 is kind of crazy. Price point is right in the middle. So, uh, you know, I'm inclined to think that I like him in GPPs. I wouldn't touch him at all in uh, in cash. And then finally, Miles Turner. 7,000 on FanDuel. Uh, 7,300 on DK. Um... Turner had 50 a couple nights ago, which is nice to see. I uh, hadn't had any big games fairly recently. Um, you know, he's going to get a, day, a dose of Collins. How good is Miles Turner? I mean, it'll be Collins. It'll be Deadman. It'll be Muscala, who I don't think can handle Turner. I'd like to know... Um, Oh, God, I lost my train of thought. Turner, Turner, Turner. Oh, yeah. Uh, how good is he at drawing fouls? Doesn't shoot the most threes. And he's not horrible for a big, you know, med, above average. I mean, there's definite upside in Miles Turner's number, 7,000. You know, he just hung 51. Dude was in, like, the quote-unquote unicorn talk before the season started. I'm going to say Miles Turner is a three. It wouldn't shock me if he was in, you know, top lineups. 
in the morning. Let's go to the Celtics. Uh, Celtics 107.75 implied total is ninth. Um, they are seven and a half point favorites at home against the Hornets. Hornets on a back to back. Uh, not expecting MKG to play. Left really early yesterday. Uh, hip maybe thigh. Um, definitely an injury. <laughs> what was it? Left hamstring. Close enough. Uh, you guys know my thoughts on Boston in general. Tough to peg down. Uh, middle of the pack in terms of matchup. Charlotte has the second worst matchup, so this one might not be as appealing. Um, we'll start with Horford. 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Uh, biggest game was a 33, which is really not going to get you there. Um, keep an eye on Dwight, I guess. Uh, he's a little dinged up as well. Apparently he had a rib injury. He played you know, really well against the Bulls, but um, I don't have any reason to suspect he won't play, but something to keep in mind for Horford. Um, it's hard to be super interested in this. Uh, it just, it's not a great spot. Um, Horford is a four for me. I just think 65 is a really low price. Um, he could have like a monster game. I just don't expect it. Kyrie at 8,600, 8,200 on DK. Um, you know, he put up uh, 58 fairly recently. And by fairly recently, I mean four days ago. Um, but other than that, he's just been sort of right around value. This doesn't seem like a situation where he would just go absolutely bonkers. Uh, so I'm going to say that he is a four as well. Uh, Jalen Brown, 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, he's been, you know, mostly in those mid-20s. Uh, biggest game was 31, which isn't really providing you much of anything. I'm going to say that he is a 4. Marcus Morris. This one's the one I'm really interested in. Uh, 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. His minutes have been trending up. He played 34 minutes two nights ago, 30 in the game before that. Um, you know, I sort this table by average minutes, and uh, he is, you know, currently at the top. So I find that interesting. Uh, he went for 33 right before the break, uh, otherwise in the mid 20s. Um, but at that 46 price point, I like it a lot. Um, so I'm going to say that Marcus Morris is actually a 2 for me on FanDuel uh, and a 3 for me on DraftKings. I'm trying to be a little bit more realistic with the tiers. Um, but yeah, that four, like he's he's got the opportunity. He seems relatively safe for cash at that price point. And I think that in GPPs, you know, that 30, if even if we said just 33 is his ceiling, um, you know, we're still looking at like seven and a half X or something along those lines. I can, what is it? 33 divided by 4.6. Yeah, 7.2 X. I'd be, you'd be more than happy with that. Uh, Jason Tatum, 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Went for 36 two nights or four nights ago. Uh, had a 30 pointer. You can't trust him at all in cash, but um, it's only he's, his minutes have been lower lately. Twenty-one minutes uh, on the twenty-third, twenty-six in the past two. I've got him for twenty-eight here. You know, you'd think this would be a relatively competitive game. Um, you know, Tatum's probably just a four, but I'm intrigued. And then finally, Marcus Smart at 4,800. Um, biggest game was a 28 since he's been back. Uh, I don't, this doesn't seem like a Marcus Smart game to me. Let's go to Charlotte. So Hornets on the back-to-back. -back. 
Uh, 100.25 implied total is dead last, and I have them as the second worst matchup on the slate behind the uh, behind the Magic. So I'm a little nervous to look at this, but we know MKG is likely out, so uh, there is a little bit of value popping up. We'll start with Kemba, uh, 8200 on Fanduel, 7800 on DK. He went for 44 last night. Um, had a couple other 40-point games sprinkled in here before the break. Went for 55 on February 8th. You would need every bit of that to be happy, and this is not really the spot. I do want to see how everybody plays without MKG, though. Um, it's an interesting way to look at this team. Because he's so limited offensively, I'm anxious to see sort of uh, what that impact is on a fantasy perspective. Because it's not like he's... Like, shots will get taken away on this swap because you're likely getting somebody with more offensive skills. Um, in this case, probably Jeremy Lamb is going to see the biggest boost on a per-minute basis. Actually, no. So whether MKG is on the floor or not, it doesn't seem to be really impacting anybody's fantasy output. Now, when MKG is off, does anything weird happen with shooting? Um, not really. A little bit less out of Kemba, oddly enough. So, good to know. Nothing crazy. Um, I'm going to say Kemba's a four. Uh, I just, between his price point and the matchup, it's going to be hard for me to see him going into the you know mid to high 50s. Uh, Nick Batum is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Uh, went for 43 last night. He had 45 in his game before that. Um, both of those games are what you're looking for out of Batum and for, uh, from a monster perspective. You know, that's 6-plus uh, X at this price. Um, you'd like a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a 4. I know that he's been a little hot, but Nick Batu. Um, again, matchup is a little tough. You can't go too crazy. Shoots 43% of his shots from 3, which the Celtics are great at limiting. Uh, Dwight Howard, again, assuming he plays, 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, you got to know that he's a little dinged up. He's had three games in the mid-40s in the past three-week stretch. That's not really going to get it done. Um, Boston is limited centers all year. I don't get the sense that this is going to be any different. Uh, if we check him out on the matchup chart, he's 65th. Um, Celtics have been responsible for nine duds at center, uh, so Dwight Howard is not somebody I'm focused on. I'll sit, you know, I don't, I don't want him at all, actually, especially if he's got any sort of rib injury. The guy you need to focus on uh, tonight is Jeremy Lamb. Um, Lamb should be in line for uh, significantly more minutes than uh, than he's normally receiving due to MKG being out. He's 4,400 on FanDuel. He's 4,500 on DK. Uh, he put up 24 last night, which, um, you know, is already 5x. That's in, you know, short shorter minutes than what I'm projecting. And, you know, after six minutes of MKG being on the floor. So not exactly the right flow. Um, he's been great in uh, situations where he's had to do um, any sort of fill-in work throughout the year. Uh, a couple different stints of being a, a big-time value guy. Averages uh, a point per possession without um, without MKG on the floor, which if he or a point per minute rather, which if he hit that mark, uh, you know you, we'd have him at 30. I've got him at projected for 28. Uh, just massive, massive value. Uh, Jeremy Lamb is just a straight one tonight. Uh, you can use him pretty much everywhere. And uh, I would expect him to be relatively highly owned, barring any weird news about MKG now playing. 
Uh, from there, it's uh, Marvin Williams, 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. I uh, put up 23.5 last night, um, and I think his price went down, which is kind of crazy. I thought he was underpriced yesterday. Yeah, it did go down, $200. Um, you know, there's a limit to how excited you can get just because he doesn't go super-duper crazy. His biggest game in his last three-week stretch is just 24 and a half. Um, and the Celtics don't necessarily uh, fit him. But I do like that sub... Uh, I do like that sub-4,000 price point, especially with MKG out. You know, he should be able to get 30 minutes. I've got him in for 29 right now, but... Uh, seems pretty safe tonight i wouldn't have like a ton of them in the gpp because i think there's relatively limited upside but at 3900 he's not going to kill you in a cash game and then uh travion graham is probably the biggest benefactor of mkg from a minutes perspective uh, he got 28 last night he's not somebody that i'm interested in um otherwise to the grizzlies Grizzlies 107.25 implied total is 11th. I believe I made this line up, and I have them as four and a half point favorites at home. Uh, this is a crapshoot. Um, that line can move in a couple different directions, but there is an overwhelming amount of value on the Grizzlies tonight. I don't know how to wrap my head around it because I don't like playing Grizzlies, but. They're playing the Suns, and the Suns are bad. The Grizzlies have the best matchup on paper, in my opinion. So let's try to hash this out, because some of these guys on the Grizzlies are not good. Dylan Brooks, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Um, biggest game in this last stretch is 27, which is fine. Um, Dylan Brooks is just not that kind of guy. Uh, doesn't get to the line all that often, uh, which is sort of Phoenix's bugaboo. So I'm going to say Brooks is a three um, just because of the matchup, but, you know, he's not someone to go crazy over. Now, Jermichael Green, 5,300 on FanDuel, uh, 5,400 on DraftKings. So um, his biggest games recently have all been in the mid to low 30s, so 33, 33, 37. Um, so he can definitely get into that 6 and 7 range here. No reason to think otherwise. Uh, I, I can't overcommit to Jamichael Green, though. Uh, he's just a 3. Now, Marcus Gasol, 7,200 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK wildly inconsistent pricing there between the two sites. Um, still not expected to have any Tyson Chandler, so Marcus Gasol is going to be getting a diet of uh, Len or Dragon Bender, and uh, he should eat that shit up. Uh, does get to the line fairly regularly. Uh, super big benefit for him. Uh, put up 43 in his, uh, in his last game out. Uh, had a 44 before the break. Um, both of those would be right at his 6x number right now. You know, I like Marcus Saul a lot tonight. I'm going to say that he's a 2 on FanDuel and a 3 on DraftKings. I could see me having a lot of Marcus Saul. Um, Jarrell Martin, 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Uh, Biggest game I've seen from him in the last three-week stretch is 33, so he can crank that up there, uh, but otherwise he's usually in the low 20s. Um, you don't want to go too insane. Again, he's just a three. The Suns will make a lot of bad people look good. Um, Andrew Harrison... 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Probably not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, went for 32 in his most recent game. Uh, ceiling of 40 here in his last three-week stretch. He's just a four for me. I don't like that price. And then uh, that's probably it uh, for me in this game. 
I mean, if you want to look at Ivan Raab or uh, Chalmers as some, you know, deep GPP plays, I can understand it, but it's not for me. Suns, 102.75 would be 17th. Uh, first up, we've got Devin Booker, 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Hmm. He went for 62 uh, two nights ago. Big coming out party for him. He hadn't been, uh, he hadn't popped off in a while. You know, not a lot of talent on the Grizzlies. So this could be another good spot for him. Uh, price is a little prohibitive, but... You know, in a GPP, I think he's definitely worth a look. I'm going to say that Booker's a three. TJ Warren, price climbing back up. He's at 7,100 now. <clears throat> uh, 6,500 on DK. Went for 41 in the most recent game. Um, he's had a couple 40-point games in this last three-week stretch. Problem is you need uh, every bit of that. I'm going to say that TJ Warren is just a four. How much does his price go up? Yeah, he's up he's up six hundred dollars since the last game and eleven hundred in the past two, so you know that's a major, major swing. Alfred Payton, seventy three hundred and seventy one hundred. Um had two games right before the break in the forties. You need a lot more than that. Um so I'm gonna say that Payton is also just a four. Josh Jackson at 5,100 is really interesting for FanDuel. 56 on DK. Um, he went for 39 in the most recent game. He had a 50-pointer. Uh, he's had multiple 30-point games. Um, I think Josh Jackson is a is a definite three, and you could even make a case that he gets into the two-tier range for me on FanDuel. Um, oh, not even close. And I deleted the formula. Okay, we'll get there when we get there. There we go. Yeah, um, you know, that 39-pointer that he just put up would be monstrous at that 5,100 price point. So I definitely like Josh Jackson more than I would like TJ Warren tonight. And then finally, we've got Bender. You know, GPP only. Gets up to 45 sometimes, but also puts up single digits. Um, he's a four. No more, no less. And Len, 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Uh, he's not playable on DraftKings, I don't think. But on FanDuel at 5,000, I think that's really realistic. Uh, I put up 33 and 37 in uh, two of the games here without Tyson Chandler. 43 right before the break. I had a tough one against AD in the most recent one, but that's going to happen. Um, I'm going to say Len's a three. Wizards now. Um, Wizards 109.25 implied total is sixth. Uh, they are eight and a half point underdogs at home to the Warriors. Mid tier spot for them. The Warriors defense hasn't been anything crazy. Um, Wizards are on the back to back, but they are at home in the second game, so I'm not too stressed there. Uh, Beal is 8,500 on FanDuel. He's 8,800 on DraftKings. Um, he's gotten into the 50s once. He had a 64-pointer uh, as well. Um, you wouldn't expect this to be a game where he just went uh, bananas, but let's take a look and see where he pops up here. It's 42nd um, on the big spots on Fantasy 5x5. Lots of duds from shooting guards against Golden State. I think Beal is just uh, a four here. Otto Porter, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, also went for 40 in his most recent game. Um, had a 47-pointer before the break, but is largely in that mid to high 30s range. Not really enough to get you where you need to be. I'm going to say that Otto Porter is a four for me. I like him a little bit more in cash. 
Sadoransky, 6,900 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. He had 19 in 20 minutes uh, in his most recent game. Was getting up into this 38, 39, 40 range. Um, but now that he's at 6,900, that's just a ludicrous price point. Going to have a lot of trouble uh, returning any value for you in a GPP there. Uh, he's not even on my radar. Um, Kelly Oubre, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. 38 um, two games ago. Had uh, another game in the 30s, both of which is would be considered like really big games for him. Um, I actually like him here. I'm going to say that he's a three for me just because of the price, and I think he's got a little bit more flexibility to grow. Then Markeith Morris, um, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Uh, Morris went for 30 in the most recent game. Uh, hasn't had anything really crazy outside of that. Um, you need him in the mid to high 30s to really provide much value. I think he looks pretty good in the cash sense, uh, but for me, he's a four. And then uh, I don't think this is a Gortat spot. They'll probably play him off the floor, although it depends on how much they go traditional bigs. Uh, we'll go to the Warriors. Warriors with the 117.75 implied total, which is first. Uh, I have the Warriors as the fifth best uh, matchup here. Um, Wizards are, you know, solid on D, but lots of positives to take away here for the Warriors. Uh, first up, well, let's just grab all four of these guys first. So Curry is 9,300 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Um, oh, got to change it. So Curry popped off for 68 on the 22nd. Um, that's really the only monster game that he's had lately. Uh, how do how have point? I know um, point guards haven't been doing all that great against the Wizards lately. Uh, six duds. Um, Curry middle of the pack in terms of matchup. You know, everyone knows that he can shoot himself into an amazing game, but it just hasn't been sort of his bag lately. Uh, this doesn't strike me as a spot where it would be. My only concern, or my only uh, interest in Curry would really be just if he can get to the line a bunch. Um, the 9500 price tag is a little, a little rich for me on DK, so I'm going to say that Curry is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Uh, Durant is 9,800 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. Going back to play uh, Washington. What's his history look like there? Um, that's not going to count. Hasn't played in wa at Washington since the 15-16 season, so he's never had anything super crazy in Washington. Um... Did go for 69 relatively recently, but again, no other games above 50. You know, all these guys are due for that sort of stuff, but that's not how life works. Um, I'm going to say similar... Actually, I'm going to say Durant is just a 3, and that's basically just because of his position. It's a little bit harder to find good stuff at small forward. Um... Clay is 6,700 and 6,600. Uh, went for 40, the most recent game. Um, that's also his biggest game by far. Uh, he's just a four for me. I don't like those prices. And then Draymond, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Um, he's been pretty quiet since coming back from the break. I know that shoulder might be a little bothersome, but prior to the break... Put up 59, uh, two games in the mid to high 40s, both of which will be what you were looking for. Uh, Draymond's a three. I probably like him the most. I'd feel most comfortable with Draymond there, and I think Curry's in the best spot to go off. Go to Dallas. Uh, Mavs, 104.75 implied total is 14th. Um, they are four and a half point underdogs at home. Uh, against the Thunder, and they're relatively close to the bottom in terms of matchup. Uh, obviously, OKC, you know, pretty solid defensively. 
So first up would be Barnes, 5,900 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, went for 36 right after the break. Uh, that 30-point range seems to be, you know, where he lands. But uh, I think there's some upside there. Um, I'm going to say the Barnes is a 3. I think that price point being under 6,000 on FanDuel is pretty interesting. Yogi Ferrell, 4,300 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Um, had a 32-point game. Uh, had a 36-point game. He's a GPP guy, but has the ability to dial it up. I can only go to a four just because of the matchup. I know that Russ is bad, but OKC is scary. Um, although with Roberson out, maybe not so much. Where does Farrell end up? Not even listed on here. Lovely. So what do they have? Barea listed? Who do they have listed at point guard for the Mavs? Oh, Dennis Smith. Yeah, uh, that, that's fine. Four for Farrell. Uh, Wes Matthews, 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Nothing crazy. Biggest game was 27. Um, it's not really what you're looking for out of him, and this isn't really the spot to go crazy. Only real interesting point here would be the fact that he shoots 55% of his shots from three and uh, a lot from the corner, which is sort of a problem for the Thunder. Um I can see scenarios where he he pops some value, but it's hard to go too nuts over it because um, it's just really not a good spot. Uh, Berea, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DraftKings. Um, at 33, his most recent game, he had uh, two separate 40-point games, one before the break, one after. You need all of that 40, though. Um, so I think he looks pretty good from a cash perspective, but he's just a four for me. And then uh, Dennis Smith, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. He's been in the mid to low 30s. Uh, not very good since the break. Yeah, uh, this isn't a good spot again for him either. I mean, it's just, a you know, it's the thunder. And then Dirk at 5,400, I mean, he's a four. Thunder now. Uh, Paul George is 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. It's a big number. Um, he had a 50-point game right after the break. He went for 56 and 63 in two games prior to the break. Uh, those are the ranges you're looking for. Um, it's not as if Dallas is a good defensive team. They're just relatively neutral. Thunder with the 109.25 implied total is sixth. Um, middle of the pack for a matchup. I'd be okay with Paul George, though. I'm going to say that he's a three. One second. Okay, I'm back. Bathroom break. Had to happen. Um, so Steven Adams, 7,600 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Uh, he's gotten into the 40s in a game. He got to 52 before the break. Um, you need him in the 40s. Uh, Dallas isn't exactly giving up a ton to centers, to my knowledge. Where does Steven Adams land here? Yeah, 43. Uh, he's just going to be a 4 for me. Now, Mello, I'm just high on in general, or at least my numbers are. Uh, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Um, hasn't done anything since the break. Uh, prior to the break, ha did have a 37-point game which would be what you're looking for, but for right now, he's, uh, in my opinion, GPP only, and um, not much at that. Great, it is a great fit for him. Um, should be a lot of mid-range shots. He has been shooting more threes this year. Um, so I can see this being a pop-off spot for Melo, where he find you know, it comes together and he has his one good game every three weeks type stretch, but it's hard to get too crazy for him. He's just not that same guy. 
Now, Russ is 11-6 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. Um, nothing crazy since the break. Uh, prior to the break, he did go for 66. Uh, this really is only monster. I'm assuming he grades out decently here. There, he's 29th. Six dud games um, against the Mavs, which is a little scary. That's a pretty high number. But they have given up three really big games to point guards. Um, has Russ, have they played at all this year? Yeah. So on New Year's Eve, Russ went for 74 against them. So he's definitely one of those monsters. The 55 you wouldn't be super mad about. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that Russ is a three. And then um, everybody else, I'm kind of lukewarm on. So uh, let's go to the Spurs. Spurs hosting the Pelicans. 111.75 implied total is third. They're uh, four and a half point favorites at home. Uh, middle of the pack in terms of matchup. Um, and Pau Gasol is expected to be uh, is expected to be out here. He's, I, I believe he's doubtful. So Aldridge at 8,700, 8,100 on DK. Um, he put up 50 uh, right after the break. Had a 50-pointer before the break. Um, he's just sort of all over the place. Let's see. I like it. I do. It'd be hard. It'd be hard to. It'd be hard to say that I don't. Um, I'm gonna say that Aldridge is a three. I like him a lot more in cash than I do in GPPs. 8700 is like a couple hundred dollars more than I would like. Um, but you know, if he could dial it up into the 50s, and which wouldn't shock me, I wouldn't be mad. Ka uh, ooh, DeJounte Murray, 6800 on FanDuel, 6000 on DK. Uh, Murray went for 52 their last time out. Um, that's really his biggest game lately. He would get a dose of Rondo, so I assume he's showing up pretty highly here. Yep, number two on the big spots uh, list. Great DVP. Um, Pelicans have given up nine big games, three monsters, very little bust games. Uh, so I'm going to say that Murray is a three. I think all of those things put together uh, lead to potential for another big game. Um, Kyle Anderson is 5,700 and 5,100. Uh, I don't ever get this dude right. Um, he's GPP only. Could swing from 11 to 38. Put up 44. Uh, when he goes off, you know, at that number, if, if that were 6,000, you know, 7x is 42. He can hit that pretty easily. Where does he show up here? 19th. Okay. Um... I'm going to say that Anderson is a four just because of the inconsistency issues, but GPPs look good. Uh, Patty Mills, 4,700 and 4,200. Um, did go for 35 recently, uh, second to last game, but again, he's mostly a GPP guy and just a four. I don't think that I have any interest in anybody else. Um, so let's go to the Pels. How do, you, how do you even figure something like this out? So, Pelicans 107.25 implied total is 11th. Uh, they're near the bottom in terms of matchup. And we've got Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-7 on DraftKings. I shouldn't have to tell anybody that's watching this video for the past hour, but uh, he has three games in the past three weeks into the 90s. Um, if he were playing almost anyone other than the Spurs, I definitely I think he would be owned out the ass tonight. Uh, I think the Spurs are one of the few teams that could give you pause here. Um, a 12-5, you know, that's a lot of freight to pay up. 
especially on a nine-game slate. There wasn't really a lot to like at center, um, which is crazy. Look, fade him at your own peril. The dude's hanging 100 like it's nothing, but I don't like it. Like, it's not a good spot. Um, the problem is, you know, he's been smashing value at a 12,000 salary for a while. Um, he's a three. I, I don't, I don't know what else to do with him. He's on another level right now. He's, you know, Russ last year type shit. But, I mean, if he's going to go out and drop 45, 15, and 5 blocks or something, what do you do? I don't, how do you, how do you model for that? I don't know. Drew Holiday, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Uh, put up 60 um, two nights ago, or three nights ago now. Um, had a 55-pointer, multiple high 40 games. Uh, love Drew Holiday tonight. I know it's the Spurs. Um... And I know it's a tough matchup, but for me in a GPP, you know, he's probably a three. Um, he's on that edge a two for me. I, I want to have a lot of him. Mostly my only apprehension is just Spurs being Spurs. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm typing that there. Uh, Miritich, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um had some games in the mid to high 30s, which is, you know, right at his level. Can go off up into the 60s, which he did once uh, right before the break. Um, Miritich is just a three for me again. I wish they had a better matchup. Eton Moore. Why am I typing that up there? <laughs> That's twice now. 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Uh, you know, Moore got up to 29 right before the break, but mostly in that 15 to 20 range. He can go off. Um, this doesn't strike me as the situation where he would go off. Uh, he's just a four. But the one guy I do want to pay attention to is Rondo. Minutes have jumped up again. Played 36 in this back-to-back, -back and you know, for in both of those games, um, has been seeing a little bit of extra run sometimes. He's at 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, he gets up to 43, 55. I think he looks like a really good GPP spot tonight. Finally, Clippers Rockets. Game shouldn't even, honestly, they should drop the Clippers Rockets game from this slate and get everything between 7 and 8.30, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, a little ambiguity here. Not expecting Gallinari to play. Did not play last night. Wouldn't expect him to play in the second set here, but who knows? It was a bruised hand. And then uh, Capella is questionable. I can't imagine we would get enough information on that before lock. So uh, tread lightly there. Um, Tarek Black is probably in play if he's out. So first up is going to be Austin. Well, let's give the, the deets. Um, 108 implied total is eighth for the Clippers. They ha are two point. I have them as two point underdogs at home. This line is not out because of that injury stuff. Uh, Houston would be the fourth best matchup. Uh, Clippers would be uh, you know in the in the bottom third. So Austin Rivers 5800, uh, 5700 on DK. Most of his games are in the mid to high 20s, which is right, right what he's priced for. So he's a four for me. Uh, Tobias Harris. I really liked him last night. He just didn't show up. Doesn't really surprise me. A little flaky like that. Uh, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Um, did go for 58 uh, two games ago. Um, so there is some upside there. You would think... You know, if he can find his shooting stroke against the Rockets, this type of pace-up game would be good for him. Um, I'd like to know where he lands here. 56. Okay. So, you know, we'll go with Harris as a 4. Tyrone Wallace, 4,500 on FanDuel, 47 on uh, DK. You know, you're, you're rarely going to get anything crazy out of him. 
Um, like he needed all of 37 minutes to get to 33. Uh, he's solid cash play. Um, you should feel pretty safe there, and he'll open some things up for you. But in GPPs, I'm not really interested. My man Lou Will, though. 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. Went for 47 last night, um, 42 the game prior to that. Uh, if Gallo is out, uh, it's hard to not like Lou Will. I'm going to go with a three. He's just got a lot of upside in him. And then finally, DeAndre Jordan. Well, not finally, but 8,400 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. I don't love it. How did he play in the last one? I'd imagine not well, but I honestly don't remember after all the drama. Oh, he did go crazy. Wait, which one was which? That was at Houston. Okay, so at home he didn't play. Um, did go crazy, though, at Houston, which is interesting. I don't love it. Um, although, you know, did have two mid-40s games and went for 60 uh, prior to the break. Gonna need all of that though. I don't. I just don't like the matchup. The Capella news would be interesting though. Um, no Capella makes me like Jordan a little bit more. So if we find out that Capella is scratched, you can bump Jordan to a three. Uh, Wesley Johnson. Minimum salary on FanDuel thirty one hundred on DK. Uh, you know it's um, it's a GPP only thing. Uh, if you want a little trickle of him, I get it. And then Teodosic, uh played 27 minutes last night, put up 26 fantasy points. Um, that's about his ceiling. He's also um, a four for me. Finally, we go to the Rockets. Um, we'll start with Harden. Harden is 11-2 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DK. Uh, hard not to like that, especially with no Avery Bradley. Um, you know, that's just one less good defender out there. Uh, you'll need Harden to put up pretty big numbers. I like him a lot here. He's a three. You can actually, you know what? I like James Harden a lot tonight. I'm going to say that he's a two on FanDuel and a three on DK. Did it again. I think Harden is in an exceptional spot here. LA Nightlife might get him, though. Chris Paul, back to LA. 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. Hasn't really gone too crazy. Put up 55 before the break, but everything's just been super solid cash-wise. Um, so I really like Chris Paul as a cash play tonight. Uh, for me, he's just a three. I'll be relatively neutral on him. Ariza, 4,700 and 4,600. Um, look, the guy gets hot from time to time. It's a good spot for him. I could see it in uh, a GPP, but he's probably just a four. No real interest in PJ Tucker. Um, for now, I have Capella as in. Um... He's 7,700 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. He's a four for me, one way or the other. Uh, I'd prefer to see him out, actually. And that's probably it. Interesting slate. Very interesting slate. Let's plug this in and see what we get. Okay, bump that rando up, and go. Oh, oh yeah. God, there we go. Uh, 
Okay, lots of Marcus Saul, lots of Jarrell Martin, lots of Jamichael Green. That all makes sense to me. Full on lockdown of Jeremy Lamb. So if we were looking for like a single bullet, you know, we would be looking like Lamb, Gasol. I would want Harden. Um, actually, let's walk that back. Let's walk back down off of Harden. Yeah, it's probably Harden. It's going to be hard to get to Oladipo, so I might need to do... It's going to be hard to get to Oladipo and Harden, which I would like to do. So if I grab Marcus Morris, what decisions get made for me? Let's just go Harden then. Gasol is there. We've got Steph. We'd be looking, I wouldn't want the Chris Paul lineups, but they're all Steph and Chris. So I would find some way to break that up. Maybe drop down to Oladipo. I don't know, it's gonna be an interesting balance. Load up the uh, DK numbers. Not sure if I'm going to be able to go live tonight. Um, wife comes home from uh, New York today, so I think that I have to do some husbandly duties. But, you know, we'll be on for Thursday and Friday for sure. And I'll keep everybody posted on Twitter today, just in case. 100 DK lineups. No surprise there. A ton of Lamb, a ton of Jamichael Green. I do like that Aldridge is popping there for DK. Oladipo not popping as much. I might have to give him a manual boost. If I just go straight to the Oladipo lineups. I think that could be relatively interesting as like a contrarian GPP lineup, you know, hoping for the Van Vliet game, Fournier a little undervalued on DK. Uh, you know, I like Paul, Oladipo, Lamb, Jamichael Green. So some of those could be interesting. Yeah, alrighty guys, that's it for me. Like I said, I'll be, uh, I'll be in touch whether or not we're going live tonight. Right now I'm leaning no. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to hit me up on Twitter or the comments or on Reddit. And, uh, you know, best of luck tonight. Thanks.